for a most brutal murder instigated by robbery, a murder whereof you, Stephen McBurney, stand convicted after a fair trial by jury, it is the judgment of this court that you are hereby sentenced to the punishment of death to be executed upon you at Sing Sing Prison during the week of December 9th. December 9th. Thanks, Judge. I won't have to do any Christmas shopping. And thank you, Mr. Chan, for what his honor just handed me. Your evidence sticks me in the death house, and I won't forget it while I'm alive. Come on, Mac. Threats won't help your appeal. Well, Charlie, you put him where he belongs. I hope you don't let his threats keep you awake. On contrary, conviction of most dangerous public enemy bring more peaceful sleep. What's that shooting? McBurney grabbed the deputy's gun, shooting his way out. Stay here all night. Take it easy. Bus leaving right away. Next stop, Chinatown. Come on, everybody. Step smart. Bus leaving right away. Next stop, Chinatown. The mysterious Orient in the heart of New York. Shake a leg, folks. Step right this way, folks. Step fast, and you'll see Chinatown before she goes to bed. Let's go, Bill. Asking me to marry you in that chamber of horrors. <laughs> what do you think marriage is, anyway? Where's our cream? Can't you read? We're closed for the night. You yeah, can't yeah, come yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, where is he? He's, uh, he's busy. He says he don't want to be bothered. That's only a dummy, a dummy. Come on. Watch this carefully. This is a difficult but brilliant move. You can't beat it. What a splendid, superb. I was not prepared for that. But watch this one. Hey, is he playing chess with that dummy or am I crazy? Check me. You've got me. Mac. Hello, Doc. What's the idea? Oh, a little lesson in strategy. I was coaching my protege. So you're the wakes. A mechanical woman. Gentlemen, my assistant, Miss Latimer. Glad to know you, babe. Well, Lily, my dear, don't you recognize Steve McBurney? He's been with us for years. The little boy from New York's Hell's Kitchen who went out west and made good in Chicago. Gee, Mac, it's you. Yeah. And Butcher Dagan. He wasn't that beautiful when they fished him out of Lake Michigan with the 13 bullets you pumped into him. Hope you never double-cross me, Doc. Well, Mac, I'm no fool. That's what I hear. Well, you got a great racket. 
A wax museum on top of the sweetest hideout the mob's ever had. No wonder the cops never bother you. <laughs> you know, Granick, that doc is smart. He makes faces behind their backs. Do you ever see the faces he makes? Oh, this wax stuff is okay. No, no. Before he operated on the law, he was the best facial surgeon in the country. A face doctor? Sure. Well, Doc, it's my turn now. Change this map. Fix it so no cop will ever know me. Well, that would be easy, Mac. But why not come back in a month when this getaway is blown over? Oh, no. You start the job now. Tonight. Uh, Lily, you better go downstairs and prepare things for an operation. Hey, what's her angle? Now she's my assistant in surgery, too. Uh, follow me. Of course, you realize that uh, you'll have to hang out here for two or three weeks after the surgery. Well, I'll swim. I can use the rest. Mm -hmm. You know them, Joe? That was Steve McBurney just come in. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> I'm forgetting. Like, well, Steve's your pal. Sure, didn't he knock off Butcher Dagan for framing you? I remember. That's what I call a real pal, Joe. So this is the Chamber of Horrors. Spooky joint. I sure hate to be found dead here. <laughs> is this where you operate, Doc? Oh, no, just an exhibit in there. That's a genuine electric chair. Still in use two years ago. 109 murders met death on it. Yeah, I had a date with his brother, thanks to Charlie Chan. Hey, Mac, get a load. The real thing. Careful. That's a switchboard for the museum. It serves as atmosphere here. But it's practical. Say, Doc, you're the one practical thing around here for me. I want the best face you ever made. Just so as I can walk up to Chan and say, hiya, Charlie, before I let him have it. Yeah, and won't that copper be surprised? <laughs> Tommy, do you mean to tell me you've never been surprised in your life? Only one occasion, Inspector, when honorable wife announced arrival of 13th offspring. <laughs> Always prefer to utilize element of surprise, never to be victim. Well, I wish I could say that. I haven't gotten over McBurney's little courtroom surprise yet. Three weeks ago yesterday, he must have gotten out of town or we'd have him. Only very foolish mouse make nest in cat's ear. Hello, Pop. Inspector. Hope I'm not interrupting. Hello, Mary. Who let you in? That's Jimmy. He's our scout leader. Mary Bolton, reporter, past daily record. How do you do, Mr. Chan? Hi, Doctor. Inspector. Charlie, this is Dr. Cream of the Cream Crime Museum. I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Chan. Oh, Inspector, this is Dr. Bunn. Von Bram, Herr Dr. Otto von Bram, formerly with the Berlin Police Department. Today, I specialize in the psychocriminology. Well, there's one cop to another, Doctor. What's that? Detective who uses microscope instead of common sense. Please, allow parent to make Confucius saying. So, Mr. Chan, you do not believe in the scientific methods for apprehending criminals, eh? Any powder that kills flea is good powder. Now, can law student explain crime of playing hooky? Well, I didn't mean to cut classes, Pop, but they, Miss Bolton and Dr. Cream, came up to college with a great idea. Pop, you're going into radio on the Crime League broadcast from the Museum of Crime. This is all Dr. Cream's idea, and a swell yarn for me. But you confer first with Chip off old Chopstick. Well, only because I remembered where to find Jimmy when we couldn't locate you today. Well, you see, each week, we have a famous detective who tries to unravel some old, unsolved crime. On tonight's broadcast, we had hoped that you and Dr. Von Braun might throw some new light 
on the rock case. Yeah, isn't that a swell idea? Let honor of advertising museum go to scientific detective. Tomorrow, parent depart for Honolulu. Tonight, same prefer good dinner to ancient crime. Excuse, please. But, Mr. Chan, this is your favorite unsolved crime. Do you recognize this man? Likeness of Joseph Rock. Innocent man hanged for crime he did not commit. Real murderer never caught. This is an insult to my ability. Once before you made such a statement, Joe Rock was convicted on my scientific evidence. How dare you insinuate? Now, boys, don't get violent. People have been arguing for years over whether Joe Rock fired that poison dart. Well, you could settle it tonight on my broadcast. Sorry, must decline. Uh, surely you're not afraid to cross the wits with my logic and science. Perhaps you leave the town because of Steve McBurney's threats, yeah? My pop don't run away from anybody. But it might look that way if you don't accept this challenge. What'll I tell the fellas in my class? Challenge? Dr. Cream makes same in presence of offspring's classmates? Yeah, and I accept it for you. I'm sorry you're turning us down, Mr. Chen. It would be an unusual experience for you. You most anxious for humble presence at broadcast tonight. It's a question of showmanship. I know what the public wants. We'll imitate woman and change mind. Most happy to accept unusual radio invitation. Splendid, Mr. Chen. This is news. Thank you, Mr. Chen. You'll be there at 8 o'clock. We go on at 8.15. I'll be there. So long. I'll be there too, Pop, in case you need any help. Contradiction, please. At 8 o'clock, young legal sprout have date for lecture on old Roman law. No hooky. Okay, no hooky. Say, Charlie, you certainly changed your mind in a hurry. I'd have given odds you wouldn't go for that phony challenge. Correction, please. Challenge may solve more than rock case tonight. Dr. Cream, once famous surgeon, now friend of many criminals, like Steve McBurney. What's on your mind, Pop? Yeah, come clean. Possible McBurney uh, visit doctor for perfect disguise. Underworld once whispered his former partner, Butcher Dagan, received same from Dr. Cream, a new face. Well, he wasn't wearing it when they found his body. Say, what are you driving at? Perhaps wrong man found and buried. Faced this body in water three months. Have long suspected Butcher Dagan, ruthless killer, not dead, but still alive and hiding behind face created by Dr. Cream. Perhaps worthy doctor have secret purpose behind challenge tonight. You think Cream's coming here has something to do with McBurney? A trap. Knowledge only gained through curiosity. I think I'll catch your act tonight, Charlie. In fact, I'll go with you. No, please. Mice only play when cat's supposed to be in bed. Mother, the son, and the music teacher. Correctly seated at the fatal breakfast table that sent Joe Rock to the gallows. We'll be seated that way tonight. My pal. And he sits right there. Hey, you. Don't touch that, you'll get burnt to a crisp. Dr. Cream, I didn't do this. I wouldn't. It's dangerous. Well, shut up and get out of here. Come on, get out. Mac, don't go through with this insane plan. It'll ruin me. No, it can't. It's all part of a gag that goes wrong. Crazy Willie there rigs up an electric chair. He puts too much heat on and someone gets hurt. No cop will ever believe that one. Well, what are you going to do about it? You queer this and you're both through. Now, don't get excited. We're all in it with you. No choice. It's about time Granny got down off that pole. You know, listening to the broadcast week after week, 
give me the idea. Von Braun, the old rock case. The one case Chan would go for. And that phony challenge got him. Now all we have to do is to wait for Chan to be seated comfortably. Then... Okay. Yeah, she's hooked up to the switchboard now. Mm -hmm. Just tap 2,300 volts from that high tension. Now it can't fail. Not a chance. Uh, if you will please excuse me. You can't go through with this. It'll ruin everything. This place, your racket. What can I do? It may turn out the way he says. You know it can't. My throat, it's very dry. Oh, was that, ma'am? But you said you'd let me in. You told me Dr. Von Braun was coming. Oh, I, I forget. I thought you were Joe Rock's friend. I am. I am. He's my pal. Then give him this. Oh, no, no. I never touched those things. You know he needs protection tonight. He's in great danger. Yeah, that's right. You can't let Joe down. You take it to him. Not that way. This way. Use the upstairs way. And then go right home. I understand. I'll make my rounds and where's my clock. Bad night, ain't it, Frank?
Lily, want to give me a test? Sure. One, two, three, testing. One, two, three, testing. Okay. The Crime Museum is honored by your visit, Mr. Chan. Of course, you recollect the tragedy of the Broadway butterfly. Here are some more of my wax creations. This is Jack the Ripper, London's mystery murderer, the year 1888. He was never caught. And here we have Henry Desiree Landru, the blue beard of Paris. They say that he destroyed 40 women in that very same stove. Excellent likeness. Oh, here's Mr. Agnew now. Well, we're already downtown for Charlie Chan. I'm nearly ready here. Uh, Mr. Tom Agnew, the director and announcer of our program. Glad to know you, sir. Miss Latimer, my assistant. Mr. Latimer. How do you do, Mr. Chan? And Mr. Edwards, our engineer. Is Mary here yet? She's with Dr. Von Brum, looking at the exhibits. Von Brum? You didn't tell me he was in this show. Sort of a last-minute idea. I didn't come prepared to handle two masterminds. I'm sorry, Tom. I phoned to tell you, but you weren't in. <laughs> Ach, liebes Fräulein, do I know this man? This is the Butcher Dagen. I see him in Chicago many years ago. I have a photographic memory. My eyes, they never forget anything they see once. <laughs> you know, uh, the uh, face, the shape of the head, it is my scientific training. Wasn't he killed many years ago? Yeah, murdered. My friends, good evening. Mr. Chan, I'm here. Do you like it, Dr. Van Brom? We are ready, yeah? Looks like we'll have a swell show tonight. Sure. That is, if the two bloodhounds bite each other. <laughs> How about supper later, I'd huh? I'd love it. Good. Well, gentlemen, we go in 12 minutes. Is everyone ready? I'm ready. I am famous for this case. The doctor. The doctor's voice. Well, doctor and Mr. Chan, we hope you settle the rock case tonight. The rock case? I thought we were doing the Gradley case. Uh, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I have no notes on rock. I have. I'll get them for you. Mr. Agnew, I will help. I solved this case years ago. Old solution, doctor, sometimes like ancient egg. Since I do the interview, I'd like to get your slant, Mr. Chan. What questions to ask? Joe Rock unjustly punished for crime committed by Butcher Dagan. <laughs> he sounds like an eyewitness. Excuse, please. I never saw Dagan. My theory is simply based on evidence already supplied by Dr. Van Brom. <laughs> now, how do you mean? Dagan and McBurney partners many years ago, also partners with Joe Rock in Honest Enterprise. Rock, honorable man, unaware colleagues were criminals. Like freak of nature, McBurney, although brutal killer, have almost brotherly affection for Rock. But Dagan, true child of Cain, hate him. To acquire business, he caused Rock to be suspected of murder he did not commit. An innocent man was hung? Brother McBearney had his revenge. I read that he killed Dagan. He got what was coming to him. Same believed by many persons. But electric chair now await McBurney for more recent crimes. McBurney ought to get a vote of thanks. He's got mine. You knew Dagan? Oh, no. I mean, according to your story. If it's true, he got what he deserved. Excuse, please. May see sore finger? Oh, it's just a scratch. <laughs> I, I'll live. Wound very odd and recent. I caught it on Dr. Cream's desk in the office. Beware of infection. What a yarn. Mr. Chan, if you can prove Dagan's guilt... Dagan won't mind. He's dead. Justice can be brought to dead men. Dagan. Yeah, it is possible. Joe Rack, maybe he's not guilty. But I proved that once. And I'll prove something else, too. Now. Tonight. Quiet, please. The studio's checking the trunk line. Testing. One, two, three, four. Testing. One, two, three, four. 
We're ready downtown. We go in two minutes. I can't help Pan. I've got business here. You can't break in here like this. Get out. I tell you, I've got to see Dr. Cream. I'm Dr. Cream. What is it? My name is Lane, Carter Lane, representing Mrs. Rock. Joe I... Rock's wife? Yes. Is she here? Why would she come here? We heard about the broadcast, and it must not be made. She doesn't want this rock case discussed. Why not? What is she afraid of? Humiliation and rather painful memories. He can't stop us. We are within our rights, Mr. Lane. A suit for damages will determine that. Don't let him scare you. He's afraid of what Dr. Von Braum and Mr. Chan have turned up. What do you mean? It is imperative the broadcast is made. One clue I did not understand tonight, she's clear. I will tell everything about your rock. Sensations. To the radio, I will tell the police where to find the real murderer. That's why Mr. Lane is here, to prevent you from telling. No, you're very beautiful, but you're just a little crazy. Stand by, everybody. Uh, take your places, please. Now, we are seated as the family was gathered at the fatal breakfast table. Uh, Mary, you sit down there. Lily, you sit there. Mr. Chan? Uh, I, I sit here. Mr. Chan sits here. Dr. Kramer, is this correct? Little Otto wants a seat of honor, too. Truth speak from any chair. We're on now. Quiet, please. Crime is always punished. Good evening, folks. This is Tom Agnew bringing you the Crime League. Through the courtesy of the Murphy Arms Company, we are gathered for our 13th weekly broadcast in Dr. Cream's extraordinary museum of crime, an educational institution. Hey, there he is now. All right, tell him exactly what I told you. Hey, what are you doing in here? Hello, Willie, don't you know me? I'm the new warden. Oh, I'm sorry, Warden, for a second I didn't place you. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, do you believe in capital punishment? You mean killing murderers? Uh-huh. Sure. Fine, fine. Would you be willing to save the state in executing a criminal? Would I? You bad. Good. Then I hereby appoint you chief executioner of this prison. You mean I can hang the Reno kid and guillotine the Blue Beetle of Paris? Sure, sure, but first you've got to begin with an electrocution. I'll do my duty. You know how to wake this thing? Yeah, when you get a signal, you push up. Well, never mind the signal. You see that clock? At 8.20, at exactly 8.20, mm -hmm. I want you to throw that switch and electrocute that man. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry to see you go, pal. And now, Dr. Otto von Brom, the famous criminologist, and Charlie Chan will attempt to prove the innocence or guilt of Joe Rock. We were seated at the breakfast table June the 9th, 1929, as demonstrated in court. It was a happy family gathering. Gentlemen, this thing is incorrect. I should sit there in that chair. No, no, doctor. But I insist. I should please, doctor. Every bird seek its own tree. Never tree the bird. Excuse. Stop him, quick. Who turned the lights off? Something burning behind Dr. Von Braum's chair. Stand by, folks. The storm seems to have taken the light off our mystery. I tell you, there's a fire. Yes, I see it. Doctor! Dr. Van Braun! What is it, Doctor? He's fainted! Uh, gentlemen, uh, carry him over here, please. Go right here. He's dead. There's a wire connected to that chair. That's what caused the flash. The doctor was electrocuted. Contradiction, please. 
wire to chair previously severed by wire cutters. Dr. Van Bum not electrocuted. Heart failure, perhaps. I'm not doctor. You make diagnosis? Well, no, I, I've been too shocked to examine the body. Excuse me. Because of an unfortunate accident, the Crime League broadcast will be discontinued at once. Oh, Tom, no. I now return you to our main studios where you will hear a musical program. You're an awful reporter. Tell him what happened. It's a great story, Tom. No, Mary, no. Criminologist was murdered. Murder? You're crazy. But how? Observe small puncture on back of neck. I see. Note peculiar discoloration. Can be caused by Tonga. Poison used by Dayak headhunters of Borneo. Found on doctor's coat collar close to wound. Small bamboo dart projected by blowgun. Served as poison carrier. What do you mean, Mr. Chan? Lethal dart was propelled by sharp breath towards dead man during seconds of darkness. By one of us. It's the only logical explanation. But the wound's on the back of his neck. Dart aimed at face. But doctor, attracted by electrical display behind chair, turned head, was struck here. Well, whoever has a blowgun can certainly save us all a lot of trouble by giving himself up now. The Dayak blowgun. The museum has one. May I examine, please? Why, certainly. This way. Here we are. It hasn't been touched. Killer used similar tube-like implement. You going to search everybody for something as big as that? No. So big. You knew chair designed to electrocute occupant. You're still crazy. Observe wire cutters. Uh, that figured in the will and auto murder was used by the killer. This young woman used same to sever lethal cable. You're all wrong. Injured finger produced by act of untwisting wire which held implement to shelf. Received identical wound just now doing same. It's a mighty impressive deduction, Mr. Chan, but you couldn't sell it to a jury. I'm not ready for jury. Please, can explain presence here instead of own chair when light returned? Why, of course, I got up to see what caused the flash. Nobody else bothered to. Mind you, I'm not making any accusations. But in the darkness, Mr. Lane seemed to lean past me toward Dr. Van Brom. That's right. The killer had to lean forward to take aim. Oh, now, you couldn't mean me by any chance, could you? That looks like a toothpick. Please, do not touch possible evidence. Mr. Chan! Mr. Chan! There's someone inside. Step out, please. Don't shoot, Bob. Well, please explain presence of one dummy inside another dummy. Well, I couldn't stay away. And I didn't want to bother you, so I got into this fella to watch. Why, ain't chess man, did offspring make use of own eyes? You bet I did. What you see? Well, nothing suspicious. That toothpick, it's gone. A valuable clue lost because offspring imitate dummy. One of us took it when all eyes were on the chess player. Hollow toothpick made from goose quill, possible blowgun. Let's search everybody. No use. Small object easily destroyed. Well, all you have to do now is find out who uses that kind of toothpick. Let's preserve any possible fingerprints where the toothpick was discovered. I'll cover it. There's your quill toothpick. Gee, Pop. Number two son must have been shoplifting at Automat. We got another broadcast to do. We better be going. Contradiction, please. No one may leave without permission of police. But I've got to phone my city desk. Must wait. Suggest all gather in office of Dr. Green. 
Uh, this way, please. Do not recall presence of woman in black at murder of Broadway Butterfly? Why, I've never seen her before. Why, she's alive. Can explain presence here? I must have fallen asleep. Are visiting hours over? I've been here long. I don't remember. You witnessed events leading up to murder? Murder? I heard nothing. A man has been killed. Oh, yes. But that was long ago. Ten years ago. How could I forget? I still wear black for him. He was killed. Murdered. Please. Would mind joining others in office? Mrs. Rock. Mrs. Joe Rock? Are you sure? Well, ought to be. She's a client of mine. How long has she been here? We don't know. Gee, Dr. Von Brom sent her Let husband to... Wait point. a minute. Police calls come first. Okay, Pop? Well, did you find a blowgun on her? Man murdered tonight was Dr. Von Brom. Careful, Mr. Chan. She's easily upset. Police headquarters? I want to report a murder. I'll connect you with the Homicide Bureau. Is Jimmy Chan calling the cops? Homicide Bureau, Lieutenant Leslie speaking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Von Brum. Somebody got him with a poison dart. Shot from a quill toothpick. What'll I tell the kid? Tell him the cops are coming. We'll be right over, Mr. Chan. Don't let anybody leave the building and don't touch anything. You don't have to tell me, Lieutenant. I've handled the case before. Okay. They're on their way. Good. Everyone remain here and possible clues at scene of crime will not be disturbed. You mean it's easier to keep an eye on us this way? Please, Doctor, desire to see electric switchboard. Oh, certainly. I was just going to suggest that. You wait here with other witnesses. Okay, Pop, I get it. These suspects won't get away from me. Suspicion is only toy of fools. Come. Oh, I, I didn't mean... I hope I haven't offended anybody. Well, that's all right. We all know that one of us is a murderer. Sure. No. Say, I'm not so sure about that. Pop! Oh, Pop! Pop! I forgot to tell you. There's somebody else in this museum. He disappeared into a cell. I saw him when I came in. Say, Pop, don't you feel well? Don't you know a wax dummy when you see one? Say, you're not supposed to be out here. Get back in the office. Who's telling me? All right. What did you do with that gun? You mind your own business. Let me handle this. Look, will you please go home? No. Dagan's here. I'm going to settle with him, too. Dagan? How do you know? Never mind. But I know. You people had no right to sneak away. Well, I thought the body ought to be covered. It looked like you were going through his pockets when I came in. No, no. I was just arranging the sheet. Get back in the office. Please. Okay, Mr. Chan. What are you doing here? Believe it or not, I'm looking for a telephone. Oh. Most odd that owner of museum cannot explain wedding of electricity 
With chair reserved for humble self. I assure you, I don't know how it happened. Say, Pop. Please, why you not remain with others? Well, uh, uh, there's something I forgot to tell you. I saw... Willie. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I, I pronounce this man dead. Please remove the body for autopsy. My night watchman, perfectly harmless. <laughs> it's the swellest execution I ever made. Even the lights went out. You threw a switch? Sure. The warden himself. He came right in here and he made me an executioner. Please, description of warden. There isn't anyone. He imagines all this. <laughs> That's what he thinks. <laughs> Can recall, warden? Sure. About so high and dark and smooth face and mm, look like an evil choir boy. <laughs> Just imagination. Pop, I've got a Quiet, theory. Please. Uh, tell me exactly. What you do? At 8.20, just like the warden told me, I pushed the switch and electrocuted Red Maddox. Where is warden now? I don't know. He went out that way. There is no warden. May I examine room, please? Uh, certainly. Pop, listen. Like busy mosquito, offspring keep chasing parents. Why? Well, there's something I've got to tell you. None of those people in there are guilty. There's another man in this building. You see him? Yeah. He disappeared into that cell. And then when I looked, he wasn't there. I swear he came in here. This gentleman you observed? No, it was a man. And there was a dummy in here with its head all bandaged up. Right here where I'm standing. And now it's gone, too. Bandage dummy part of exhibit? Oh, yes, it uh, must have been changed temporarily. Uh, shall we move on? One moment, please. Marks on floor indicate prison bed move. That. A trap door. Oh, just a storeroom. If storeroom innocent will apologize. Lead way, please. Yes. Uh, this gentleman is my workshop, my studio. Here I create in wax the photographic likeness of famous criminals. My work, purely educational, endorsed by schools and colleges. My theme is crime does not pay. The end of the evil trail is prison or death. Please, please. Uh, sculpture was my hobby, it is now my profession. There is an artist in everyone if you look for him. Don't you agree with me, Mr. Chan? Most unusual form of art? Uh, I do that when I'm nervous. Tearing pieces of paper, you know. Exact duplicate of Steve McBurney's signature. First observed in courtroom. What nonsense. I don't even know McBurney. Say, pop up it. Hey! A hidden room. Oh, boy! Doctor. Most interesting. This where you operate on your dummies, Dr. Cream? No. This is surgical birthplace of new faces. But Mr. Chan... Evidence betrays museum to be hideout for hundred criminals who change faces to cheat law. So they could carry on the rackets. Pop, you've discovered a big thing. Now I understand why Miss Latimer cut wires to chair. She did not want murder to expose museum's most profitable business. One moment. You answer telephone. Hello? What is it? Hello, give me Walker. Then give me the city desk. What? Who? Jimmy Chan. Uh-huh. You're talking to the seller. Oh, Pop! Miss Bolton, she dialed her office and got me. Telephone obviously operated upon so outside world cannot be reached. Then I didn't talk to the police. They're not coming. McBurney, he didn't tell me about that phone. And now they know that Von Brom died instead of you. Here's where I settled with Chan.
I thought they'd gone. That was the plan. But if they know that you're alive, well, then they're still here. And they'll kill you and they'll kill me. Like they killed Dr. Von Braun. Correction, please. Criminologist not killed by McBurney. Murderer was Butcher Dagan. Dagan? How do you mean? Three clues spell Dagan. Quill, toothpick, bamboo dart, and poison called Tonga. Get that Chinaman before he gets us. No, first we let him spot Dagan, then we get them both. Dagan send another man to meet McBurney's bullets. Officially dead, Dagan vanish into new identity until recognized tonight by Dr. Van Brom. And threat of exposure cost criminologist his life. Dagan kill to prevent exposure of new face. Dr. Cream, which one Dagan? I tell you, I don't know. With the new face, he could be a woman. I mean, posing as a woman. You give to Butcher Dagan living disguise. Dr. Green. Sir, uh, Doctor, you've got to tell us who Dagan is. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. I never met Dagan. You're covering up. Mr. Chan knows what he's talking about. We're all in danger here with the killer loose. Mr. Agnew, quite right. We'll send offspring outside a of building immediately to telephone police. OK, Pop. Mr. Agnew, you will please lock front door after son's departure. Very well. Please excuse okay, me, Pop. I have something to attend to. Oh, no, you don't. Why, oh, let me go. Try to make a getaway, huh? Now, how you make getaway to summon police? Oh, gee, Pop, I forgot. Where's the key? I don't know, you idiot. Perhaps radio control box connected by telephone to broadcast studio will summon police. Right. I never thought of that. Edwards, put me through to the studio. No connection. They signed us off. Say, Pop, when I was in the lobby, Please. that... Please, too many theories. Let no one leave this room. We'll try to fix office telephone. You fool, don't try another double cross. What'd you say? Oh, I said it looks as though you're the boss. Oh. Didn't sound that way to me. Mr. Lane, why were you spying on Mr. Agnew and Mr. Chen? Spying? What's this? I want to know what's going on. You see, I came here to prevent a murder. Dr. Von Braum's murder. What? Who wanted to kill him? My client, Mrs. Rock. The death of her husband left her embittered. She believed that Von Braum persecuted Joe Rock to make his evidence stick. Tonight at her apartment, she threatened to shoot Von Braum if he wouldn't exonerate her husband. I begged her to let me handle the matter, but she lost her temper and ran out with a gun. That's why I came here. And now I'm convinced that she couldn't have killed Von Braun. Mrs. Rock, is this true? Do you know this man? Then he isn't your lawyer. She's under a very great emotional strain. I think Mr. Chan should know about this. That's your business. Who did that? Put those lights on! Don't move! There's a killer among us. I hope this isn't somebody's idea of a joke. Where's the light switch? Please, Inspector O. Matthews? Yes, telephone feel much better. Desire inspector at once. Request to report murder at Museum of Crime. Killer Butcher Dagan still in building. Witnesses to crime in great danger. Uh, uh, uh. Why doesn't someone speak? Tom! Mr. Lane! M maybe Dagan's sneaking up on us. Oh! Somebody just touched me. I did. How many times do I have to ask? Where's the light switch? The corner on the right. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. What's going on here? Which one of you put those lights out? Hey! Where's Dr. Cream? I knew I had the right man. He got away in the dark. You! You work with him. 
You put the lights out for his getaway. Prove it. Pop! 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 Knifed. Got him from the other door. Question, please. How you know killer use other door? Well, Mary was outside this door and no one could come in this way. Gee, Pop, it's really you. Oh, for a minute I thought that... Tell your grief, honorable music to ancient heart. I get it. You set a trap to catch the killer. I'm most grateful to Wax Twin for deceiving same, but knife thrower escape in darkness. Oh, the knife? No. Do not touch. Fingerprints may have message. Oh, Dr. Cream, he's gone. Do likewise. Go for police. Each moment of delay dangerous to all here. I'll have a general alarm sent out for Dr. Cream. He's Dagan. I got it all figured out. There wasn't any Dr. Cream. Dagan killed him and had somebody give him Cream's face. He wouldn't run away if he wasn't guilty. Unless doctor desired to escape offspring's theories. And there was something else. Just before the lights went out, I saw... Sometimes better to see and not tell. Dr. Von Brum proved that. Once more, hurry for police. Okay, Pop. I won't let you down this time. Please. Everyone assume position held before darkness came. Dummy, I saw. He's dead. Who is it? The removal of bandages necessary for identification. What happened? He's all right. Oh, that bandage dummy. It was a man. He's dead. Please touch nothing. Fingerprints will prove dead man was Steve McBurney. Are you sure that was McBurney? Dagan strike again. Wound in dead man's back indicate mortal blow with knife. Say, what were those five crisscross scars in the back of his neck? Fresh scars. Signature of Dr. Cream. Incisions made in facial surgery to tighten and alter contour of face skin. I thought you were the killer. Where's your dad? Please, Inspector, must apologize for reception committee. Well, that's okay, Charlie. When your broadcast was cut off, I figured I'd better come over and see what was going on. Oh, can you let my men in? The front door's locked. Jimmy. Say, we picked up Doc Cream outside. Is it true what he tells me about Von Braun? Quite true. Steve McBurney also murdered by Butcher Dagan. Dagan? Contrary to opinion, Butcher Dagan still alive. Dagan here? Well, which one is he? Have you spotted him yet? K-1. 
killer will be identified when fingerprint expert arrive. That's right. Sure, Dagan's prints are on file. Oh, but he must have thought of that. But he could have changed them by an operation. Oh, you sound like Jimmy Chan. Oh, no. I wasn't trying to escape. I was, I was just going out after some help. You certainly tried to avoid my squad car. Pete, call headquarters, get homicide over here. Burns, get on the front door. Nobody leaves. Now, Cream, which one is Dagan? You know, we can't protect a man who won't name his enemy. Well, perhaps the doctor doesn't consider Dagan his enemy. I swear I don't know him, and I never did know him. Please, suggest others remain here. You come with me. Mike, go in that back room and see that no one gets out of that window. Casey, you come with us. Now, what you see just before lights go out. Mr. Lane, he made a funny move towards that wall. Then lights go out? Yeah. Observe, please. Secret light switch concealed in door to curio case. I get it. Lane plunged us into darkness and grabbed a knife from here. See, it's missing. Say, Charlie, if Lane is Dagan, why didn't he try a getaway? Killer evidently made an attempt to escape in moments of darkness, but met obstacle of front door, which I had previously locked. Then he saw McBurney and knifed him. Correct. Cream knows who Dagan is. Why won't he talk? Fear is cruel padlock. Well, we'll get him with fingerprints. He can't get out of here. Hey! Hey, come out of there. Please. We've got Dagan. Contradiction, please. Prisoner is Grenock, bodyguard to Steve McBurney. Don't let Dagan get me. He killed Mac, and now he wants me. If you're McBurney's man, you know Dagan. Where is he? I don't know. We were waiting for Chan to spot him. There, she's Dagan. Why, I thought he was Dagan. Dr. Cream surgery not create Mrs. Rock. Take him out. You came here to kill Dr. Von Braun. No, only to confront him, to beg him to reconsider the evidence that convicted my husband. He would never see me. Say, Pop, she doesn't sound insane. I had to pretend that after I guessed the way you did, that Dagan was here. I wanted to stay to avenge Joe. No weapon in handbag earlier. When the lights went out during the broadcast, I was suddenly afraid, so I hid the gun. I didn't want it found on me. But now you use him. Yes, and no jury would convict me for killing Dagan. He framed my husband, sent him to the gallows. Mock insanity, not always safe alibi. Mrs. Rock, how did you get into this museum? The watchman feels sorry for me. He thinks I come here to talk to my husband. I'm sure he didn't throw the knife at Mr. Chan. I'm also positive. Say, Pop, Dagan must have Buck Bernie's gun. I don't see why he doesn't shoot his way out. Maybe contemplating same, if unable to remain invisible. Or may strike from darkness with blowgun. Please, hold valuable evidence. Antidote for Tonga, poison used on bamboo dart. Where did you get it? from Dr. Cream's office. Observe, duplicate of blowgun used by Butcher Dagan. That's a toothpick from the automat. Yes. Are you trying to tell me that Von Braun was killed with a toothpick? No. Small bamboo dart containing original poison. Dagan blew it into the doctor's neck. A mere scratch is fatal. Ah, uh, that's silly. I don't believe it. Go on, Pop. Show him. Son, read parents' thought. Tom Agnew! You fool! Give me that antidote! Don't waste time, this is quick! You killed Dr. Van Brum. Yes. Also Steve McBurney. Yes, I had to. You framed Joe Rock, innocent man. Yes, yes, but hurry, give me that stuff! Dart only broken matchstick. Original needle of death still in pocket. Your prisoner. Casey. Take him out. My boss. Club me with a feather. Mr. Chan, you've cleared my husband's name. 
I'm deeply grateful. How can I ever thank you? Justice, like virtue, brings its own reward. Well, Mr. Chen, you win the radio debate. You solved the rock case, all right. Charlie, how long have you known this? Knowledge short, suspicion long. I might have known. Any other radio man would have stayed on the air to broadcast von Brahms' murder. Small nose for news in radio man. First aroma of suspicion. You knew he was there all the time? Hiding place discovered when Mike's figure suddenly developed telltale scars on back of neck, like Steve McBurney. Gee, McBurney gave you the clue to spot Dagan. And we might have cleared out of here and left him to a clean getaway. What about Dr. Cream? Oh, he'll get five years for lifting Muggs' maps. <laughs> Supper? I've got a whale of a story to phone. Well, after you phone, then. Mr. Lane, I'm awfully sorry I suspected you. Oh, that's all right. Forget it. It kept me on Mary's mind. Hey! I've been watching you. You can't get away with museum property. Let that be a lesson to you. Yes, sir. Say, Pop, what was Dr. Cream doing with an antidote for blowgun poison? Uh, that was a bluff, Jimmy, just a bottle of toothache painkiller. Boy, you sure pulled a fast one. I'm getting sick and tired of all these dummies around here. Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs>